Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Open Mic VO. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry Festivus, whatever it is that you might celebrate at the holiday season. Um, Open Mic VO is all about getting together as a community to share stories and knowledge, to both get and give advice, and to collaborate on problems that participants might pose to the group. Uh, feature a different topic every week. This week's topic is what is on your voiceover wish list for Christmas this year. Uh, the group here tonight is all about being positive and being supportive and having fun. Uh, there are participants tonight at all different stages in their careers, but everyone here is a professional, and I expect that everyone gets treated professionally. Um, so to those of you who are new members of the professional voiceover community, welcome. And there's no such thing as a silly question. Go ahead and ask away. Three rules, they're really simple. Mute yourself if you're not actively participating in the conversation and you do that using the little microphone icon in the lower left-hand corner of your Zoom meeting window. And just click on that microphone icon when you see that you're unmuted and that mutes you and then just unmute yourself when you are going to participate in the conversation. Second rule is really simple, be nice. And the third rule is we're recording and the recordings get posted to YouTube. So just keep that in mind if you should be coming up with any sort of uh, proprietary information or sharing something that is, uh, is confidential because I can't control where the recording ends up once it gets posted to YouTube. I want to take a moment to thank VoiceSam.com for uh, the ongoing sponsorship of Open Mic VO. VoiceSam is a unique demo player that, amongst many other things, allows casting directors to zero in on very specific reads in your demo. You can learn more at VoiceSam.com. Use the promo code OpenMic, O-P-E-N-M-I-C, to double the length of your free trial. So let's get started. Tonight's topic, what is on your Christmas wish list? A shiny new microphone, maybe a new demo by Chuck Duran or Cliff Zellman, um, Peace on Earth. Uh, I do certainly suggest, though, that you share tonight, though, because I just looked on the attendees list and noticed that there's someone I haven't seen before, um, S. Nick. So maybe it's St. Nick, maybe there's someone, maybe he's actually listening in tonight. So make sure that you give us your list of what it is that you're looking for so that, uh, so St. Nick, if he happens to be listening in, is going to be able to bring it to you on Christmas morning. So once you see that I've unmuted you, please feel free to jump in with your wish list. Uh, and remember to mute yourself in the lower left-hand corner if you're not going to be speaking uh, right away. Also would like to suggest that if you are shy and don't want to put your info or, or speak your info, uh, or maybe you don't have a setup tonight where you've got a microphone uh, that you can access, uh, feel free to type in the Q&A box. It's easier if you type in the Q&A box rather than the chat box. Feel free to type in the chat box if you want to speak amongst yourselves, and I will keep my eye on the chat box, but uh, if you want to... Uh, to list something that I'm actually going to, to uh, talk about, then you can use the Q&A box. So with that said, I'm going to start unmuting people. Once you see that you are unmuted, just mute yourself, unless you're going to start. Um, Trey Shelton emailed me earlier and said, hey, I can't attend tonight, but here is what I'm looking for from Santa's bag for Christmas Day. And Trey says he wants an Electro Voice RE20, which is a microphone. He wants an Apollo 8 Quad. My, he's uh, expecting Santa to be very generous this year. He's also looking for a Cloud Lifter CL1. Um, and that is, it, it's kind of a little microphone preamplifier that is useful for mics like the uh, Electro Voice RE20 and the Shure SM7B to boost their signal a little bit and he wants some universal audio plugins and that uh, those are the plugins that go with the Apollo quad that he was asking for so 
uh, he is, I hope he's been a very good boy this year because he's certainly asking for a lot from Santa for Christmas. So, um, who wants to get us started with your Christmas wish list? Still unmuting people here. Almost done. Okay, Graham, I'll start. Hello, how are you? I'm okay, how's it going? Is, this is James, right? This is James from New Jersey. Well, welcome, James. Hi. And what, what's on your wish list, James? I'm doing a lot of audiobooks uh, lately for uh, like over the past three, four years. And I really need to dial in my FX chain. So my wish list is to get one of these uh, big pro people like uh, Amanda Rose Smith or uh, Jamie Mantler or uh, George Don, Whittem. George Whittem or, or Don uh, Burns Barnes to help me dial these things in because I'm not floundering, but I don't think I've dialed one in. I've done like almost 40 books now, and I don't think I have the same sequence dialed in for any one of them. <laughs> oh, oh, so each book is com sounds completely different from each other one. Uh, they're, they're not completely different, but I don't think I have the effects chain really, really worked out yet. I see. And how are you going to decide which of these esteemed gentlemen and ladies, I should say, because Amanda Rose Smith was on that list. Yeah. Are you going to decide uh, who should get the honor of working with you on it? Well, Amanda is a real good friend of mine. And, she is and awesome. I, I see her regularly in, in the city. So um, when she's got an hour to set aside for me, I'd really like to work with her. Uh, Don has been very, very gracious with his time. Yesterday, he helped me uh, mess around with RX-6 um, with a couple of plugins, which was nice. Um, and I didn't have to pay him, <laughs> which was even nicer. That's always the the free support is always the best support. Yeah, I mean, he's he's very very generous with his time, and and uh, he and I have been talking back and forth quite a bit lately. But um, well, I can certainly, um, I mean, the list of people that you just rhymed off: Amanda Rose Smith and George Whittem, and I mean, these are Don Barnes. These are awesome, awesome people. I know that any one of them is going to be able to dial in just exactly the right sound for you. Oh, James, you still there? Still here. Okay, cool. Um, so please pass my regards along to Amanda. If you happen to be speaking with her, tell her I said hello. Okay. And, um, and who else has got some items on their wish list from, so that Santa brings them this year? Well, I kind of like to catch up with uh, James, who I had the pleasure of uh, speaking with earlier this evening. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't, I'm not even sure where to begin. Uh, in terms of an effects chain, uh, we're talking about software effects. Uh, a lot of times people advise um, just going absolutely effects free and letting the post-production folks square that away. But I'd be really curious as to what James feels a, a basic starting point is um, in terms of, you know, compression, expansion, this kind of thing. I'm very grateful for uh, any pearls of wisdom he can throw this way. James, to tackle that <laughs> per pearls of we're looking for pearls of wisdom. That's what William well, wants yeah, for Christmas yeah. from you. Pearls uh, cast at swine, <laughs> I guess. Um, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> um, what I have done, I mean, for audiobooks, it's a little bit different than than uh, for say commercials and things like that, where you're doing very very minimal 
uh, things, especially for auditions. But for audiobooks, I mean, you have to do some compression, you have to do some limiting, you have to to work within uh, the sound parameters of, say, if you're doing it on ACX and Audible, they have uh, certain parameters that you have to adhere to. Uh, I start, uh, my, my booth isn't particularly noisy, but I start with a little bit of noise reduction. Uh, it's the first thing I do. The second thing I do, let me see if I can pull my effects chain up here. Um, some of it's very, very basic. And one of the things I've been doing, messing around with RX-6, if you have it, if you don't, don't worry about it. But there is a wonderful, wonderful plugin in RX-6, which is called Mouth Declick. And it takes those little things out. Uh, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And uh, talking with Dawn, I've uh, put two instances in back to back instead of clobbering the uh, the uh, the uh, waveform with one big you know mouth de click, I run it through twice, so it takes a little bit out one time, it takes a little bit out the next time. Then I hit the EQ, then I hit um, uh, a compressor. Uh, I use two different compressors again in series, just, you know, one takes it down a little bit, another takes it down just a little bit more. Uh, it's better to run it that way than, you know, like I said, clobbering it all on one thing. James, and, question for you on that. Yeah. Are they the same compressor or do you use two different compressors? Like one's in. Well, uh, I an just opto got the update to Neutron 2. Mm hmm and it runs its own com two compressors back to back. Mm -hmm. So I ran it through there and the track assistant feature of it is pretty darn good. Uh, it makes me sound like me without having goofy, funny artifacts and things like that. So it's pretty darn good. The thing that I did though was add just a little bit of a gate in there uh, at the beginning to take uh, erroneous sounds out that you know otherwise I wouldn't be able to do and then I run a deep breather because I breathe very loudly uh, and then the last thing I do is run a, um, uh, a, a level well I have tri leveler on here because I'm running in Reaper but um, it's basically a an expander is the last step to bring things up to spec for uh, ACX very cool um, you actually just brought up a really good point, and that is often when we're running these noise reduction um, plugins, and and even when we're doing compression, as you just mentioned, we're often far better off hitting it lightly twice than and, and running it through twice than we are, as you said, clobbering it with a compressor once. And and you're right; it sounds there's artifacts as in digital right. artifacts uh, for those of you who don't know well, what, the book what I'm doing at the moment. I'm running it through the, uh, the neutron tube, uh, 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 isotope thing. But before what I was doing was in Reaper, there's something called regate and then there's something called not regate. I'm sorry, recomp. And there's a re X comp. The re X comp is a, um, a compressor, uh, a multi-band compressor. So I was, you know, deciphering little multi-bands here and there, and then I would run it through the compressor, the the recomp compressor second. Very cool. Um, Tatum Martin says, "What what what they would like for Christmas is voiceover work." <laughs> um, I am new and would like Santa to bless me with affordable one-on-one -on -one coaching to develop into a skilled voice artist. Anybody have any thoughts on coaches that you've used over the past year that were good and were affordable? And by affordable, let's say um, $150 an hour or less. And I don't know, maybe Tatum's going to go crazy when I say $150 an hour is affordable. But anybody have any thoughts on coaching that that uh, Santa might want to put into Tatum's stocking. Hi, this is Blair in Los Angeles. Hey, Blair. Hey, Graham. Um, yeah, I worked with Rhonda Phillips, and she is lovely, really talented, and I believe her hourly rate is about a hundred mm -hmm. an hour. And um, she has, I want to say, about twenty years of experience, and just has a, a broad understanding. So I loved working with her, and she's very encouraging. Um, 
I also worked with Julie Williams and I think I kind of bought some time with her along with a demo. So I don't really know what her hourly rate is, but I suspect she's not higher than 150, but she's really great too. Yeah, I've never worked with Julie. I've met her at a number of conferences and stuff, but she certainly strikes me as very competent and she's been in this business and doing training a long time. So mm -hmm. um, I certainly haven't heard anything that I would suggest people not use Julie Williams. And Rhonda, I, I know of her, but I'm not as familiar with her. Is she based out of Vegas? Um, no, she's in, Den well, she's in Colorado. I, I don't know the yeah. exact little town that she's in. But um, definitely at least talk to her. I know probably Julie will do the same thing, but I know Rhonda will spend about 30 minutes with you just talking to you about what you want to do and how and if she can help you. So um, she's really cool. She's you really know cool. who else uh, does that a lot? And I keep telling her she should stop giving away all her, all her <laughs> secrets for free is Kate McClanahan, who I'm oh. doing a vlog with now. Right. Um, but Kate McClanahan, uh, it's Sound Advice is, is her website. And mm -hmm. she's awesome. Uh, yeah. voiceoverinfo.com I think is actually the website um, she's awesome very experienced and she will happily speak with most new uh, new voice actors for half an hour just to give them a bit of a lay of the land so there's another name I'll throw out there Kate that McClanahan. is also dependent on what genre or genres that you want to pursue too very uh, fair uh, commercial coaches are going to be a little bit different than audiobook coaches are going to be different than long form narration coaches or e-learning coaches are going to be different from uh, video game people. So, you know, uh, not, there's not a one size fits all. Absolutely fair. I guess when I was thinking about coaching for uh, new actors, I tend to just automatically default to kind of general commercial coaches, but you're absolutely right. That was James again, right? I th I'm pretty sure that was James. Yeah, yeah. I just muted myself again. Sorry. <laughs> um, and you're absolutely right, is that if you're interested in audiobooks, then perhaps some of these coaches we just mentioned aren't the best choice for you. There might be others who specialize in audiobook genre as an example or other long form narration. Graham, I have another quick question. Um, I am interested in a male coach that would work with people that do, that do commercials mostly. Um, this within that range we were talking about, less than 150 an hour. Can anybody um, give a shout out to any men coaches, male coaches? Uh, well, I'll mention Jeff Finney, who is Kate McClanahan's partner in Sound Advice. Uh, I actually did a coaching session with him last week and I didn't know much about Jeff, but the coaching session was awesome. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how much their hourly rate is, but uh, again, go to voiceoverinfo.com, which is uh, the Sound Advice website, and check out Jeff Finney because he's wonderful, he's gentle, he's encouraging. Um, you know, he might be a one one possible good resource. Anyone else have any male coaches that they can recommend? Okay, well, we will table that for the moment then. If anyone else uh, comes up with some ideas on male coaches that that might make sense, uh, make, be a good fit for Blair, then please let us know. I'm just trying to unmute a few people who've joined us uh, just in the past few minutes. There we go. Uh, Sandra says, uh, hey, Graham. Um, Last year, I was hosting a different show at the same time last year, and uh, she says, I said, what do you wish for for the coming year? And Sandra said she wants 20 new clients that pay on time, and she wants free ISDN. And I said that I accused her of being the little girl that wants the shiny new pony. Anyway, Sandra has great news is that she got the 20 new clients. And they haven't all booked like every week or whatever, but she has 20 new clients and uh, she got ISDN, uh, not for free, but um, Sandra lives in Vegas and ISDN. Vegas is one of those few markets where the phone companies will actually still in install ISDN 
and do so fairly affordably. So, um, Sandra, I take it back when I accused you of being uh, of overreaching last year and of wanting the shiny new pony. You proved me wrong. You went out and got it, and I'm proud of you for that. Who else has a, a wish list for their voiceover business for uh, for Santa for you know Christmas a week from now? A whisper room. <laughs> a whisper room. Okay, does it have to be a, a brand name whisper room, or are you just looking for a, a booth of some sort? A booth of some sort would do the job, but I live next to an airport, and uh, so there's a little sound remediation uh, <clears throat> problems, like maybe digging a 50-foot deep cavern under my house might be a start, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not up for that task. So I think a commercially available whisper room would be nice. I'm not sure I'm ready to take on the sound proofing and sound remediation myself. So uh, well, say it if you're listening. There, there are other brand names, though, of, uh, of vocal booths you might want to try. The one's called vocalbooth.com. Um, another one is... Um, Oh, Studio Bricks is the is another one that um, you have to custom order them, and they come from Spain, but they are stunningly beautiful. They are the most wonderful looking booths ever, and they sound really good too. And they go together like Lego pieces. It's um, it's really quite cool. So check out Studio Bricks as well. I'm and just... um, I certainly hope that Santa brings you what you want. Although I'm not quite sure how they're going to get a booth down the chimney. <laughs> I'll, work, I'll help. Um, yeah, just put both of those sites up. We're going to take a look S right Santa now. Santa rolls up in one of those uh, three-quarter ton trucks and with the with the the elevator thing on the back, and you'll help and, him unload yeah. and bring it into the house? And unionized elves. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I was always told that Santa uses a chimney stretcher. Yes. You know what? As a kid, that's what I was told as well, that he's got this special tool <laughs> that allows the chimney to expand. Very cool. Oh, these things are beautiful. Oh, Studio you're looking at Studio Bricks, bricks right? Oh, holy smokes. All right. And they are priced um, comparably. I mean, you do have to have it shipped over from Spain, and you have to pay some duties and things like that to bring it into the country. But all in all, by the time you do pay everything, it's a, it's a slight premium, but it's not as much of a premium as you might think. So you should check it out, Studio Bricks because they, they are wonderful booths. Thanks. Who else has got something on their Christmas wish list? Hi, Graham. How you doing? Good. Tina, how are you? I'm fine. I actually, I would like to get some coaching because I haven't had coaching in a long time. And I also feel like I eventually would like to get a new commercial demo. So that's my wish list. Although my finances right now are, I don't know how I'm going to do all this, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I think the key is you, you kind of, uh, you know, go out and get a little bit of work that helps you fund more coaching and new demos to go out and get bigger work. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, hit the online casting sites and pick up, a, you know, you don't have to pick up too many of those two or $300 jobs. And all of a sudden you've got, uh, you know, a six pack of coaching from somebody. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I kind of want, I'd like to get, uh, well, I've been in this for quite in this industry for quite a few years, but, um, I didn't, unfortunately, when I first started, I really didn't get very good coaching and I didn't know a lot of people and I didn't know the people who to go to, but I would like to get some recommendations for coaches. Fantastic. How old is your present commercial demo? It's about six years old. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not, I always worried you were going to tell me it was 16 years old. <laughs> you know, there's, no, lot, there's, there's lots of people out there with 16 year old demos. Trust me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So six years old's not horrible. Um, 
and if you've done some work since then, hopefully you could even just update one or two of the segments with work you've done subsequently. And, you know, you might not need a new commercial demo. You, you might be better off uh, focusing on, on uh, more coaching. And more coaching. And I think I could revise it. I think I also need to work with my studio a little bit because the sound isn't, isn't quite where I want it to be. I think that might be another problem I might be having. Well, so. the expectation certainly now, especially for non-union voice actors, is that you should be able to record broadcast quality audio from home. I mm -hmm. mean, it's not rocket science to do that but it does require a little bit of investment in equipment and a little bit of investment in, um, you know, acoustic treatments as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it really is, you know, in 2018, it's an expectation that you've got a pretty decent home studio. Right. Right. Uh, who else out there has something on their Christmas wish list? Sandra says, for Christmas, I want an iMac because right now I'm doing everything on a MacBook Air, which is the kind of smallish, like the really thin MacBooks, which actually I use a MacBook Air and it's not even a very new one. My MacBook Air, I think, is five years old now. But when I travel, that's what I do all of my recording and editing on and it works just fine. Um, and Sandra says she also wants an Apogee mic. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Apogee mic, it, um, it is this tiny little mic. I swear it's maybe four or five inches tall. And it's uh, a USB mic, so you can plug it directly into something like a MacBook Air or anything that takes USB. But it also works with, um, I, it has a, a lightning connector. So you can actually plug it into an iPhone or an iPad and record directly onto, onto your iPad. I remember I did a trip to Dubai a few years ago and, I tr and all I took with me to travel with was my, was my Apogee mic and my iPad. And I remember doing several uh, auditions from Dubai and sending them off via email with nothing more than the Apogee mic and the iPad, and they sounded great. Um, so the Apogee mic, and it's M, so it's capital M, lowercase i, uh, capital C, and that's how they, that's the brand name of the, of the particular microphone. Um, really cute and really portable. I wish that the cord that it came, comes with is longer because they only give you maybe a, um, it's probably an 18 inch, an 18 inch long cable. It's like, what the, what the hell with that? I mean, it's useless. But uh, other than that, I highly recommend it. Sorry, I'm just making some notes here. Okay, um, who else has got something for us tonight? Anything you're looking for for Christmas that's uh, voiceover related? I know, uh, there's one little gadget that I've always wanted, and it's it's from Harlan Hogan. For those of you who don't know Harlan Hogan, he's this um, wonderful veteran voice actor based out of the Chicago area, and he has a website called I think it's called voessentials.com. And he sells the, you know, little, he's got a microphone with that, a signature microphone, and he's got, you know, a few other, you know, odds and bits and bits and pieces of equipment. But he sells this thing. It's this sign, like, um, it, it's this sign that, like the signs that you see outside of uh, radio broadcast studios that say on the air or recording. And I need one of those because inevitably I'm trying to record in my studio, which happens to be over top of the stairs at the main entrance. And my wife will come in and start clomping up the stairs and ruin the take. So I want to get one of these signs that I can just flick, flick a little remote switch 
and the recording light pops on and then Aaron will know to be quiet when she comes in the front door. And uh, I think it's under a hundred dollars or something. I like posted that. a link for you. <laughs> Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Uh, it, it is voiceover essentials, right? Okay. Yeah. I said VO essentials. It's actually voiceover spelled out essentials.com. And James was kind enough to put it into the, uh, the chat box. Thank you so much. Who else has got when, something? I was going to ask you or Graham or anyone who can tell me, um, what, what is a denoiser for, for your sound? Is there something called, have you heard of something made by isotope called isotope called yep. denoiser? James, I'm going to throw that one to you, buddy, because you were just talking about it. All right. Most uh, of the upper tier uh, DAWs have a noise reduction uh, plug-in already, but Isotope is a um, Isotope RX six is a standalone program, but it also has uh, its own uh, plugins that you can use in your DAWs, and one is a spectral denoise. Uh -huh. One is a vocal denoise, and then there is a, um, I think those are the main two. Um, and you can use those, again, in tandem. You don't have to use one or the other, but you can use both. Basically, what they do is they, they take a sampling of your waveform, and they find out what your noise floor is, what your booth will sound like without you talking, without you breathing, without you doing anything. Okay. That's what the, the background noise of your booth is. And it will reduce that noise and try not to affect the sound of your voice. The problem is that a lot of people, again, they clobber it over the head and then it starts to affect the frequencies of their vocal range, oh, which makes oh. you sound like you're in a tunnel or you're talking. Right. Um, right. It, you want to go very light with that kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. um, one of the problems that I run into is I live in an apartment and when I'm recording, if I'm on the first floor and I record from my closet space and if someone's up above me and i hear their shower it's like oh i can't do this that's a different kind of thing that's a totally different kind of thing okay um, what you would do in that instance is you would have to go into a program like rx6 and actually dump the wave file in there and find out what that noise is and eliminate it through there Oh, okay. Uh, a noiser or a, a, a noise reduction plug-in is going to take a general sample of mm -hmm. your waveform, mm -hmm. not that specific little thing like the shower. What you're talking about is uh, basically audio repair, and mm -hmm. that's what RX6 does. Yeah, I guess the difference is uh, it's Tina, right, that's speaking? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the difference, Tina, is if you have an, like a, a continuous air conditioner hum or there's a right. continuous fan with your computer or something like that, the, right. the, the denoise plugins are awesome at removing uh -huh. that type of steady noise. It, it works with the same kind of technology that, you know, the headphones you wear in airplanes that Yes, yes. It, it's the same sort of technology that, that those headphones use. Mm -hmm. but when it, but it, they're no good if it's like a, a phone ringing in the background, as we're hearing now. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. It, it, won't, it won't take out, you know, abnormal noises like a phone ringing. You'd have to go in and, and actually edit those out. You know, right. my best, my best uh, advice to you is you need to record like at 10 and 11 o'clock at night. Exactly. That's probably that's probably it because I that's where I got confused because I didn't know if the noise reduction did that, but it doesn't sound like it. No, it, it, I mean it, it, they're really good, but they can't perform miracles yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, if, if there's a if there's a phone ringing, it's not going to help you with that. Yeah, and and right. noise is kind of a catch-all term. There's something also something called line noise, which is just something that's intrinsic in you know the 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 ether. I mean. Mm -hmm. if, your house is wired in a certain way and it's creating magnetic inf interference with your microphone or your interface, you're mm -hmm. going to get line noise, which is basically a hum, a mm -hmm. constant hum. Mm -hmm. But things mm -hmm. like, you know, somebody running the shower or your refrigerator kicking on and off and things like that, you're, you're going to need a, uh, a, a repair 
program, an, uh, an audio repair program for something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. Cool. Um, I want to take a break just for one minute, and I want to share with you a brief little video supplied by Bob Merkel at VoiceSam. So just give me one second here to get things set up. Don't forget that uh, a trial of VoiceAm is yours um, for free, and Bob is willing to double the trial period from uh, 15 days to a full month. All you need to do is enter open mic as your promo code when you go to the VoiceAm website. So who now has um, another wish list something that they are looking for from santa for uh for voiceover for christmas hey graham yes michael how are you uh this box has some i'm looking for a portable mic stand a portable mic stand like for when use when you're traveling Yes, yes, uh, that I can just put in my uh, carry-on bag real easily, and uh, that would be good for like a, a hotel desk, or maybe I can use it in the car or something like that. You know what I use, and I find that it's even much, it's even more helpful than that mic stand, and you know what is, I've got it right here, if you just give me, give me a second and let me get it out of my, my little box here. Okay, cool. This thing, this thing totally, I know there, there it's in better focus now. This thing totally rocks. At this end here, you just put on your shock mount or whatever, and this okay. affixes to anything. Sorry, I'm just trying to get into focus for you. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Cool. Um, there we go. This thing, you can affix to anything. You can affix it to the edge of the desk. You can affix it to, and of course, this whole thing is totally flexible. You can affix it to the edge of a desk. You can, you know, what I do when I travel, if I'm in a hotel room, I take the ironing board and I put the ironing board on top of the desk. And then I just, you know, clamp this onto the, one of the legs of the ironing board. Cool. Um, <laughs> this, this, is, this thing is amazing. It really is. And I can't remember the name of the manufacturer. Is it marked on it? Dinkum. D-I-N-K-U-M. D-I-N-K-U-M. Dinkum Systems. And I bought it from B&H for, I don't know, it might have yeah. been 40 bucks or something like that. It's been invaluable. Okay. It's been a lifesaver. Awesome. Well, I'll check that out. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any suggestions for, uh, for Mike on... Uh, portable mic stands? 
Hi, Graham. Hey, Gary, how are you? Doing fine, thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, question, basically, I'm heading this question towards James, if he's still on. Uh, we were talking about narration a while ago, and he spoke of uh, using deep, the deep breather, and it's my understanding that most narrators, or, or excuse me, most uh, authors would prefer to leave the breath in. Am I wrong by assuming that, or? People breathe. <laughs> People breathe. Right. And if you're doing a long form, I learned this a long time ago. I went to audio engineering school in 1980. I'm not going to tell you when. And we were still splicing analog tape then with razor blades. And one yeah. of my, uh, my projects was to cut breaths out, but we had to take, put breaths into places. And the, the rationale was that psychologically, when p you're listening to a long form piece of narration, and you don't hear a breath, or at least you don't feel the semblance of a breath, the listener becomes anxious. They don't know why, but they do, because they want to breathe along with you. They want to understand the pacing. They want to understand, you know, what human contact is. And if you're just talking along and talking along and talking along, and you're not taking a breath, and you're not taking a breath, and you're not taking a breath, and I can do this day in and day out and keep on going and going and going and going and going, <gasps> it makes people anxious. So right. yes, when you're doing audiobooks, leave the breaths in. You may want to attenuate them if they're too loud, because I have to, because I breathe very loudly. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, I and I use a debreather for that. It doesn't catch them all, but it catches a good 85% of them. I got you. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, Gary, um, I use the, the plugin is actually called Debreath from Waves. Right, and that's what I have. Yeah, it works awesome. What you need to do is you don't uh, have it remove the breaths entirely. You can have it just reduce them by 12 dB or 15 dB or something like that. So the breaths stay in. Okay. They're just uh, dramatically reduced in, in gain, that's all. All right, great. And, uh, and I find that that works great. It's a, it solves James's problem, which is perfectly legitimate, that people, when listening to long-form narration, want to hear you breathe. Right. But yeah, I, I, that's what breathe. I have is I have the waves, and I have not played with it as of yet. So good information. I shall try that. I, that Waves Deep Breath plugin is a part of my daily um, workflow. I use Great. it every day and it works wonderfully. Thank you, gentlemen. Pleasure. Who else has got uh, something on their Christmas wish list, something they're looking for from Santa that and has to do- Let me just add one thing about the deep breather. If you go on the Waves website, they often have sales. So wait for it to go on sale. It'll be like $29. Usually it's like $79 or something. So wait for it to go on sale. Yeah, that's the one great thing about Waves is they're often running really substantially uh, discounted uh, discounted sales. And paid, you're right, uh, James. I, I think paid I, uh, I paid forty dollars. I think about two weeks ago. So yeah, right now that's what I paid for. Thirty nine dollars I paid for it. Yeah, you know, exactly. a few years ago. So yeah, good. Yeah, cool. Who else has got something on their wish list? What is Santa going to put in your stocking for Christmas? Hi, this is hey, Maria. Maria. How are you? Okay. I uh, want a Sennheiser MKH416. Don't we all? <laughs> I, I'm a little afraid because somebody told me that it picks up noise from the back. But I tried it out at B&H and I, I, I just love it. Yeah, the, the 416 people either really, really love them or really, really don't like them. Um, I, I mean, I've got one. It's right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a way, when you record yourself on a 416, it doesn't always sound so great, at least in my estimation, when you're just listening to your voice, you know, without any of the sound effects and other stuff going on in most commercials. But there's no doubt that when you record yourself on a 416, that when your voice gets mixed into the music bed and stuff like that, that your voice cuts through all of the other stuff going on so much better 
from a, being recorded on a 416. And I don't know why. I, I mean, the, when you look at the frequency response graph of a 416, it's really not that much different from most other mics. It's, it's fairly flat, but there's something about the way a 416 handles the mid-range that makes you just sound awesome. You just cut <laughs> through like crazy when you're doing commercial work. Really, really like it. Right. But there's one caution that I always give people. If you're going to spend the money, make your space, your recording space, sound proof or at least sound deadened. Uh, 416 is going to sound like crap if you're, you're talking in a live room. If, you're, if your recording space is not well treated, it's not going to do you any good. Certainly the 416 likes, like it doesn't like tiny little booths very much. It really does sound quite congested and cramped if it's in a small booth. Um, and I have typically had better results with, you know, other mics in smaller, in smaller booths than a 416. But if you do have a little bit of room, um, it's, it sound it does sound dynamite. It it is a good sounding mic, and yeah, well, I, I think retail need to breathe retail in space. Still nine ninety nine on it, I think. Yeah, they need to breathe in space. Uh, granted, but it, again, if if you're doing it in a gymnasium, it's it's not going to sound very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but then nothing is going to sound very good in a gymnasium, right? Even a uh, even a dynamic mic like a SM7B is not going to sound very good in a huge reverberant space like that unless you're recording an orchestra in which case it's supposed to sound like that um, who else has got uh, something on their wish list I gotta tell you the 416 that that's right up there with the uh, on the list of ambitious gifts that people are looking for 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 Christmas <laughs> What, can I ask you, when you talk about a small, because I don't have a large studio, but it's a some fair people, space. Some people are trying to record in, you know, tiny little closets that are like maybe 18 inches wide and oh, two no. or three feet deep or kind of like, it, it doesn't work well in that. I mean, those little booths can sound okay with different mics, mm -hmm. but a 416 is not the right mic for that little okay. space. Okay. <laughs> Graham, I've got one. Um, yeah, Steve, so, please go ahead. Yeah. You were talking about um, voice coaches and different genres and things like that. What about an actual vocal coach? Can anyone recommend, because uh, I find myself sometimes doing some lazy things like swallowing the ends of words and it ends up costing me more time and editing and everything like that. Is there anyone that can help with just overall vocal improvement, not just, you know, coaching for a genre? It sounds like what you really need, if it's, if you're talking about, you know, swallowing the ends of words and things like that, it's more a speech pathologist that you should be working with. Um, Edge Studio, which is where I used to work, has uh, a couple of people on board that are speech pathologists, Pen Pen Chen, and yes, that is re her real name, Pen Pen Chen, um, is dynamite. Um, so uh, certainly would suggest you, you know, get a hold of a speech pathologist, and if you can find one that, you know, has a... Um, a lot of knowledge of the voiceover business, that's even better. Yeah, so, I think that's the key, because I did go to a local speech person, and she said, oh, it sounds fine, but it's not in the industry. So, you know, she doesn't kind of notice the, the things that I notice when I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, so, so Pen Pen Chen at Edge Studio. Um, there's another guy at Edge Studio named James Andrews who's also a speech pathologist. So you might want to try one of those. Does anybody know of any other speech pathologists that specialize in the voiceover business? Those are the only two I can really think of uh, right off the top of my head. That's great. No, I didn't have those names, so it's wonderful. Thank you. Fantastic. Anybody else? What is it you're looking for for Christmas? This is Blair. I can ask for something. Hey, Blair. 
<clears throat> I've got to find some good breathing exercises or someone that can help me with my breathing. Um, I've been doing these exercises each day trying to get used to breathing for my diaphragm and it just doesn't seem to be working very well. So a breathing coach or I don't even know, I guess it would be a singing coach or I don't know. I'm, I'm flustered with even what I need. Maybe that's why I'm having such a hard time. Um, again, a speech yeah. pathologist could help some, but, um, but certainly someone, I mean, there are vocal coaches out there that work with public speakers and, pe and people like that that could be of benefit to you. Someone okay. was going to add something there as well. Yeah, a singing coach would be able to help you, especially with breathing. I've been a singer for probably since I came out of the womb, and I'm in my mm -hmm. 60s now. Um, my first voice lessons I took when I was in seventh grade and I breathe very deeply from my diaphragm automatically. I don't know how, how else to breathe. I've been doing it for, you know, all of my life. So, and, and I think the key to vocal health too is proper breathing technique because it supports the sound. It supports your vocal box. Um, the people who breathe very high, dancers especially, they breathe very high, and you'll notice that, that dancers have very raspy kind of voices because they breathe differently than, than... I'm so glad you said that. I used to be in a ballet company. Yeah. I'm now feeling, oh, good, because I was also, I used to sing too, but I, but it's got to no, be... A, a, yeah. a, a good singing teacher, somebody uh, who, who uh, teaches classically trained singers, Mm -hmm. It's going to show you how to breathe properly. Not somebody that does this pop stuff. That's that's completely different. Okay, uh, thanks, but you, but you need a classically trained singing vocal coach. Okay, great. Thanks. I just want to change gears for a second. Does anybody have anything that they're particularly grateful for um, over the past year when it comes to the world of voiceover? Any shout outs that you want to make to just to say thank you to somebody or some organization that really helped you out this year when it came to voiceover. I'm very appreciative for all of you. Uh, it's been a, a bit of a tumultuous year for me with my departure from Edge Studio and, and starting up some new ventures. And uh, I've had some tremendous support from the voiceover community, which I am very, very grateful for. Thank you all so much. Um, anybody else have any shout outs, any kind of... Graham, something? I am totally blown away about this whole situation. These people are the finest people I have ever dealt with in my life. I've asked one or two questions, uh, Facebook, et cetera, and I get a multitude of answers back. It's just the most great group of people I've ever dealt with that try to try to help you along uh, and, and they don't have to do that. They do it because they, they've been helped themselves when they got started. So it's just a great group of people, and I'm very appreciative to be a part of it. Just the entire voiceover community. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody I've spoken with has just been fantastic. I have certainly discovered in the voiceover business that um, there's not a lot. It's funny because we are actors, and there's no getting away from that. But there's not a lot of ego. Like even the even the men and women at the very top of the voiceover game, like the A-list actors in in Los Angeles and in New York, are so down to earth and willing to share and to help. And um, I remember I was on a you know a, an old bulletin a voiceover bulletin board service called VOBB you know, five, six years ago. And Bob Bergen, who's the voice of Porky Pig and, you know, a hundred other well-known characters. He's just, you know, an incredibly talented actor. Took the time to critique my commercial demo at the time. Like it's, it's an amazing community that we're all a part of. You're absolutely right. Uh, Sandra says, I'm very grateful to be a part of the community and I'm uh, grateful to be a member of WOVO or World Voices. That's uh, world-voices.org. And um, the unity and the willing to help amongst the community is, is great. My career is skyrocketing because of the unselfishness of veteran VO professionals. And Sandra, that's so awesome. I'm so glad to hear that you're doing well and that 
you took advantage of this collective of the community. I mean, just the fact that we get together here on Sunday nights, uh, you know, I, I've had up to 70, 80 people on these Sunday night calls in the past. And it's just everybody getting together and wanting to, you know, give, wanting to share, wanting to, you know, provide whatever advice, whatever guidance they can. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It really is. I was right. just going to go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tina. Go ahead, Tina. I was just going to say, I'm really thankful also for the community just to kind of kind of echo everybody's sentiments, but I'm also thankful for the clients that I have had and the relationships I've been able to develop with them because I think it's really neat when you email someone and they really respond in a timely manner because so many times there are so many emails that you don't get responses to. So I'm really thankful for, for those relationships I've developed also, but, but extremely thankful for the community. And in fact, I'm going to be planning on joining uh, World Voices in the next couple of days. Fantastic. Someone else was jumping in there as well. Well, it was Blair again. Hey, I just want to give I want to give a shout out to the people that are willing to mentor in Wovo. It has been really helpful this year, and everyone's helpful. But these people are super helpful and will look at your screen and help you with problems. And you know, they they give like an hour a month, but it it's a it's a godsend. It really is in many situations. So. You know what, Blair is I I am one of the Wovo mentors, and mm -hmm. I have to tell you that I feel I've gotten more out of my relationship with with the guy I'm working with. Than he's ever gotten from me. Um, I, I think that the mentor mentorship relationship is one where both parties benefit, and I just love the time I spend with uh, with my guy Kyle. So believe me, it's it's as it's as great for us as it is helpful for you. Good. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention that we're going to be taking a hiatus. Um, we're, not, we're obviously we're not going to be around on Christmas Eve, and we're not going to be around the weekend after. So January seventh is going to be the first open mic VO of the new year, and the topic is going to be how to like, what are the benefits of, and how do you get the most out of attending voiceover conferences. And my guest is going to be Gerald Griffith, who's the executive producer of. VO Atlanta, which is now, you know, far and away the largest voiceover conference in the world, I would suspect. Um, it, the last VO Atlanta, uh, last March, I think that Gerald had something in the neighborhood of 500 voice actors in attendance and another 100 people who were presenters and exhibitors in the exhibit hall, etc. So there was 600 of us all, all gathered together in a hotel in you know, near uh, near the airport in Atlanta. Hopefully, the um, hopefully the power will be on when we go uh, back in February. Um, so anyway, January seventh. That's going to be our topic for for that evening. So I think that we're going to call it a night. I um, once again wanted to thank uh, Voice Sam for sponsoring our show. Remember to use that promo code Open Mic at sign up to double the length of your free trial period. Also, certainly want to invite you to check out that new vlog that I'm working on with Kate McClanahan from, uh, from uh, Actor Sound Advice. It's called Straight Talk VO. And Kate and I discuss weekly, uh, every week, uh, some current industry events. Uh, our first episode, we're really quite proud of because it was a panel discussion where we were talking about the recently resolved sag after a strike against the video game companies. We had some great guests on. Um, that one was an hour long, and but it's worth the hour for you to have a listen, especially if you're interested in video games. But don't worry, our normal our normal episodes are going to be you know ten minutes long. Um, so until January seventh, um, work hard, audition a ton, get lots of work, and have a wonderful and safe holiday. Many thanks, Graham.